Very nice. It's very pleasure uh, to meet you guys here with our ambassador. How are you, sir? I'm very good, thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you very, very much for coming, and uh, especially in Guinness University. And hello. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Lily. Hi, Lily. This is very Lily. nice to have Lily here as well. So, um, this is an ambassador. Mm. What would you like to cook for today? So I thought we might try two dishes today. Uh -huh. Both of them very easy to make, right. but they look very good on the plate. I so see. very good when you've got the parents or the parents and more visiting cool. and you need to impress them. So uh, is there any particular reason why you choose this? This is, I'm, I'm not sure, maybe it's related to your family. Um, There's, there, are, there are two reasons uh, for these dishes. The first are that I'll cook a seafood dish. Uh -huh. It was my uh, mother-in-law's favourite dish that I oh, cooked for cool. her. And she was uh, very important to all of us. So it's, uh, I call it parents-in-law seafood because mm. uh, easy to cook and, very, and uh, it looks very good on the plate. Ah. Um, the second uh, dish is uh, mushroom soup. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, cheats mushroom soup. Mm -hmm. Very quick to make. Mm -hmm. um, anybody can make it. Uh, uh, almost impossible to make a mistake. It must be very, very, very delicious. It, it is because we cheat. We put yogurt and milk in it rather ah. than do it on water and chicken stock. Okay, Mr. Ambassador, would you like to explain to us what is sure. the ingredients and... Sure, so for the, mm -hmm. for the seafood, uh -huh. you can use any kind of seafood, oh, right. uh, uh, really, for this dish. Very important, not so much how much, how, how much you pay for the seafood, but that it's fresh. I Particularly see. if you use mussels. Oh, yes. So mussels, when they're fresh, are delicious, but they can make people a, a little sick if they're not fresh. And I'll tell you how to tell the difference between a good one and a bad one. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, prawns, you can find anywhere. Prawns or shrimp anywhere in uh, Indonesia. You can use uh -huh. big ones or small ones. I like to use big ones mm -hmm. because they hold their shape in the, right. in the dish. Yep. And uh, 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 squid. So you can use squid or you can use octopus. Mm -hmm. um, very important when you work with seafood is to always wash your hands. Uh -huh. So I washed my hands before we started with the show. Um, and then uh, the other dishes, the other ingredients are very straightforward. Um, we've got some uh, onion and some garlic, which goes in early. Uh, chili, depending on whether you like it quite hot or blazing hot, uh -huh. put in both lots of chili. And the main ingredient in this dish is uh, yellow curry, a yellow curry powder. I lived in uh, Thailand for three years, which is where I learnt and saw yellow curry used. Mm -hmm. um, you can make your own, it is very easy. Lots of uh, recipes for it on the on the web. Mm -hmm. uh, if you just Google yellow curry, you'll see yep. many alternatives come up. Some are very complicated, some are very simple. Mm -hmm. I would make the simple one and add to it. Right. Um, so I've, I've got one that's already made. So that's really all you need for, um, for the seafood dish. You can use, uh, uh, or you should use uh, uh, coconut milk, good quality coconut milk. Um, I always at home use uh, uh, Australian yogurt, a type of, uh, it's called Greek yogurt, very thick, uh, delicious when you add it to uh, all sorts of uh, both soups and chowders. Um, uh, that's one of the best uh, in Australia, that one. So, can we just jump to starting to cook? Sure. What do you think, Lily? Right? We're ready yeah. to go. Okay, Let's so so we'll put the pot on the, on the flame. So you put it on a, a medium flame. Uh -huh. You add a little bit of coconut oil. So I just cover the bottom of the pan, Lily. Okay. Wow. So about that much. She's so handy. Yeah. It's great. She's oh. very good. She's yeah. very good. That's perfect. I don't do too much of the work as you can see. Ah. And then you add the onions. Uh -huh. Not too many. Not too many onions. Then you add the uh, you add the garlic. Now the, the one of the advantages of this uh, dish is if it looks right, mm -hmm. it is right. All right. You don't have to measure out too many mm -hmm. ingredients. Um, make it a couple of times, mm -hmm. bit of an experiment. All right. It won't take long to learn what you like best mm -hmm. when it comes to flavour. So you uh, you wait for the onions to go clear, don't let them burn. Use this bubble if that's not too big for you. Um, to uh, uh, wait for the onion to go clear, don't let it burn. Mm -hmm. And then when that's about right, we might just turn the heat up a little bit. When you start to smell the garlic, it's uh -huh. probably about right. Uh -huh. So if you mince your garlic, it uh -huh. will cook more quickly. And as you start to smell the garlic, that's probably about right. You can hear it starting to sizzle. That looks about right, doesn't it, Lily Pilly? So we'll add uh, uh, chili. 
as I said, make this a couple of times, experiment with what you think looks good, and uh, you'll get the flavour right. So you, you let that uh, a minute or two on a, high, on a medium to high heat, not very long. So that's about right. So we'll throw in uh, half. Uh, about half, yes, that's right boss. <laughs> so try half. What do you think? A little bit more maybe for, for make it nice and strong. Yep, that's right. And then you start to add your seafood. All right. I add the seafood in order of yeah, density. Uh, so I would do the chewiest and the yeah. most, most uh, the thickest first. So mm -hmm. put a handful of that in. Just a handful, big handful. And it goes. I'd do the prawns next. Mm -hmm. We love prawns in our family too. Uh, so we have a, um, a house near the beach. Okay, can you throw in uh, four or five pieces of the, of the seafood, of the uh, fish? So you cook the seafood like that, making sure that nothing sticks. Like that. Okay. So just like that. And then you uh, use coconut milk and you cover just enough. Okay. You leave, uh, I let the seafood just poke through the top. I see. And then as you go, you can see, uh, you can add a little bit of oil if you need to, and you can see how the colour starts to look. So then you turn it down to low, mm -hmm. as low as you can get your stove to go, mm -hmm. and you let it cook away. You don't need to stir it very much. And you can tell from the colour uh -huh. how strong it's going to be. Ah. So that one will be a medium strength because it's not strength. very yellow. Yep. The, the more yellow it is, mm -hmm. the stronger the flavour. Uh -huh. And if you like chilli, you can add chilli at any point. So we like fresh it. Chili, all fresh chilli. Chili. Fresh chilli is probably best. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think using fresh ingredients means that you don't have to cook in a complex way because the flavour of the ingredients help you out. So you let that uh, simmer away. We'll come to um, the other ingredients in a moment. Um, while that cooks, if you want to, uh, you can also make a second dish. So the second, while waiting for that to cook. So that will take on a low heat, 20 minutes to a half an hour. Um, uh, you can, you'll be able to tell from the look of it and it depends on how low you can get your stove. So some stoves are very easy to have. Lower it the better. You want to make sure that the seafood is cooked all the way through, but you don't want to burn any of the other ingredients. So you let, you let it simmer away. So while you're waiting for that, you can make uh, cheats mushroom soup, um, which Lily and I have been making together for a long, long time. So is there any reason why you love the mushroom? Uh, well, we're, we're a big fan of mushrooms in my family. So as I was saying, we have a house near the beach and uh, we catch seafood and, and cook the seafood. Oh. Uh, my wife's actually a better cook, a better a cook of seafood than I am. Um, and we try and uh, use uh, local products. So in Australia, mushrooms are very, uh, very easy to find and very good quality. Um, they're the best type of mushroom, field mushrooms. Mm -hmm. uh, never pick your own mushrooms um, because there are many poisonous mushrooms around and it's very difficult to tell them, tell them apart sometimes. So, so unless you know, unless you really know what you're doing, Never cook your own, and never pick your own mushrooms. Um, so we tend to use these big field mushrooms, but you can use, there are all sorts of mushrooms you can use. Um, these are button mushrooms that have been sliced up. So quite small button mushrooms are quite easy to find and often uh, uh, quite cheap. Yep. So uh, a good ingredient for uh, students to use. So, uh, mixed together, not yep. burnt, not, not smoking. Burnt. Still in golden yellow. Yeah, things. very yellow colour. Yeah. Um, So to cook uh, uh, the mushroom soup, you take, um, I'll get my assistant here to help me again. You take a heavy pot like that. In the bottom you put some olive oil. Right. 
So we, uh, we, at home we use Australian olive oil, which you can uh, get in Indonesia, Cobram. Um, Australian olive oil, there are many small producers, boutique producers that make very high quality olive oil. So it's uh, very good for, for cooking things like uh, soups because it adds good flavour. So we'll put some olive oil on the bottom, cover the bottom of the, you cover the bottom of the pot. That's right. Now, one of my secrets, which is not really a secret, the French have known this for a long time, mm -hmm. anything tastes better with butter. butter. Anything the, tastes better the, with butter. Yeah, the, so, the for uh, you'd put about that much butter in. Mm -hmm. And so you let the, the butter melt into the olive oil. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you'll find that mushrooms too uh, absorb mm -hmm. uh, uh, fats, oil, mm -hmm. and uh, olive oil and butter very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, the hotter they are, the more they absorb. Mm -hmm. So that's about, um, uh, she's very good. She never adjusts the flame herself. Um, uh, so I, I, if you make it too hot, the mushrooms go soft very, very quickly. And I can't prove this to you, but I think that means they have less flavor. Mm. Anyway, we'll, we'll see how we go. All right, so then what you do, once uh, you've got, yeah, so once you've got, stay where you are, sweetheart. You've got your oil and your butter like that. Uh -huh. So, you know, uh, mixed together, not yeah. burnt, not smoking. You cover the bottom of the pan with a big handful of mushrooms, like this. In fact, it's a big pot, so we'll do more than a handful. And then you stir them around until they've started to absorb the oil and the, and the butter. Mm -hmm. Then you add uh, milk. So the milk's over here, let me get it for you. Fresh milk is best. Uh, some it Sorry? No, full fat if you can full use fat. it. So uh, 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 I think with the oil and the butter in there, you don't need to worry about the skim milk. Right. I think at this point it's too late. So you cover, you just be very careful to cover the bottom of the mushrooms. So about that much. So you need to, if you, if you put too much milk in, your soup will become very watery, mm -hmm. which, you don't, which you want to avoid. It's not so creamy. That not so creamy. So the, the objective of this soup is to make it quickly but have it stay creamy. Mm -hmm. So uh, you add fresh milk, uh, you turn your flame all the way down, you put it back on just for a minute or two, just to make sure everything's uh, hot. Give it a stir. Mm -hmm. And then you add, uh, very easy as I said, salt and pepper. I add about half of it now, so about half of that, Lily. So I add half of uh, what you think looks right, because mm -hmm. you can always add more later. Mm -hmm. If you add too much salt or too mm -hmm. much pepper, you can't take it out. Oh. So you're much better off doing half and half. Yep. Salt and pepper are very handy uh, ingredients because they do, you can add them at any point during the cooking mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. So we'll add about half of that. Give it a good stir. Mm -hmm. So can you stir that up for me, Lily? And then, then you just blend it. Okay, so now when you blend hot, when you blend hot items, mm -hmm. you need to be very careful because it will shoot the steam up. Mm -hmm. So when you blend hot, hot uh, soups and things, mm -hmm. be very careful to let as much of the steam as you can escape as you put it in. You can see the steam coming off. So we'll give that a go. So I would do, I do it slowly at first because that lets the steam come out. You can see the steam coming up. Yep. So there's no, and once the steam's come out, and then what you do is you add a spoonful of yogurt at this point. Mm -hmm. I always add the yogurt last. Sometimes when you cook yogurt, it starts to separate. So it looks, uh, so it starts to look uh, not, very, not very delicious. Mm -hmm. So I like lots of yogurt in this soup. Mm -hmm. You can put a little or a lot as you like, and then you give it one very quick blend. You don't want to whip the yogurt. There we go. Then you can serve this in a number of ways. You can use you can use a bowl like this, a bowl like this, or you can use a teacup. A teacup, huh? Yeah. And you just tip it in like that, like that. And you put uh, we'll put some parsley. I think we might use some parsley for this one. You 
put some parsley on top mm -hmm. and you choose bread. I see. And there's the first course for you. Mm -hmm. So when you blend it, make sure you blend it all the way through so it's nice and smooth. Mm -hmm. um, and then it will have a froth. You'll see on top it has a frothy top. Mm -hmm. It has a cappuccino look. Um, your seafood should have been cooking through. So at this stage, the seafood will look... That's okay, I'll move it. So at this point your seafood will have cooked through mm -hmm. and will look something like this. Yep. At this stage you add, for colour, some tomatoes, some cherry tomatoes, tomatoes. cherry tomatoes cut in half, mm -hmm. a couple like that. Lily will put through, throw some peas, but you can use anything that's green. Mm -hmm. I use peas because Australia and Australia, uh, peas in Australia are a very traditional mm -hmm. ingredient, They're very sweet. Mm -hmm. um, you add some peas and then what you do is... Uh, Mussels, so you steam these in a pot okay. before you add them. Mm -hmm. um, it's what I would do here mm -hmm. in, in Indonesia, make sure you get good fresh ones. Mm -hmm. um, when they open like this, mm -hmm. you'll see there's a slight opening there. Uh -huh. Probably too small for the camera. That's a good one. Yes. So that means they're fresh. All right, so when you steam a mussel, mm -hmm. if you steam it and it doesn't open and it's like that, throw it away. Okay. Um, you need to be very careful at this point not to burn it. So, you could, again, as low as you can, give it a stir, Lily. So, like the soup, there are two ways to serve this. You can serve it with a lot of sauce, mm -hmm. so it's more like a, a, what a lot of people call a chowder. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you like it that style with lots of sauce, um, that'll probably do, Lily. I might just serve. Yeah, it's, uh, there are two ways to, to serve it. One is, as I said, a, a chowder. Mm -hmm. And in that circumstance, so that's what it looks like in the pot when it's ready to be served. Oh, very nice. So you put on the bottom the little bits and pieces that you like like that, and then you add much, much more sauce. You just tip, pour the sauce in, mm -hmm. so you can make it into a soup, mm -hmm. like that. Um, you can, of course, have big bowls, little bowls, whatever you like, uh, and you can garnish it, like that. So that's one way of serving it, as a soup, or uh, why don't you go and get the other ones we've prepared, Lily. The second way is to serve it as a main course, uh -huh. uh, which uh, gives you all sorts of options. And, oh, I and I would serve it a main course like this. So you have uh, the, the, the uh, main elements in a, in a bowl, not too much sauce, lots of colour with some garnish and some uh, rice right. on the side, of course, it's Indonesia, yeah, so you always has yeah. to have rice on the side. Yeah. There are two ways, two types of rice you can use. You can use uh, uh, traditional white rice that mm -hmm. you see very common in Indonesia. Yeah. But um, uh, interestingly, I've come across in Indonesia heritage heritage grains of rice. So this is grown by a product, by a, a, a project that we support in Bali. Okay. They use a heritage grain. Mm -hmm. um, the rice is uh, very strong, so very popular with farmers. Mm -hmm. For instance, when a, a, a storm comes through mm -hmm. and, a, and a hybrid rice is growing, mm -hmm. it will be flattened. Ah. The traditional heritage rice won't be. It stands up so the farmers don't lose their crops. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it in the palm of your hand, it's, it's like a brown rice. Yeah, yeah. So there you have it. Voila, guys. So um, this is a very, very delicious. And where's the mushroom soup? The mushroom soup is right over yeah, here. Together. So with the mushroom soup, if you, if you want, mm -hmm. you can add uh, a lot of pepper to that to make it quite hot for uh, mm -hmm. the Indonesian taste. So I think Indonesians and Australians, people say their cuisines are different. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that's right because I think uh, in Australia now there's a quite a, uh, uh, an appetite for spicy food, which I think Indonesians have always liked. And Indonesians and Australians have one thing in common when it comes to dessert, and they like their sweet desserts. I think uh, when any any dessert uh, goes is very popular at our house, and any time I go to an Indonesian's uh, friend's house, uh, the dessert goes very quickly too. So I think that is something they have in common. Thank you very very much. Thank you, Lily for helping us. Bread in the shop, uh -huh. so choose the bread you like.
uh -huh. and uh, it goes very well with the soup. Uh -huh. um, very easy to make. You can make it very mild, mm -hmm. not so much salt and pepper. I think most Indonesians. Okay, guys, hello. Uh, come back again with our ambassador, uh, Mr. Paul Grigson. Okay, so, wow, it's very, 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 very delicious. This is, this is the good part of the day. This is the yeah. good part of the day when you've done the cooking and now you get to eat. Yep, and I become hungry now. So, let, can we start? Can we start? I, I can. We might want yeah. to try the soup first. Okay. So, as I said, if you... Uh, uh, Work hard on the soup. Uh -huh. There's a little bit of a cappuccino look. Uh -huh. I know Indonesians like their food spicy, so yeah. I've added a bit of extra pepper. For this oh, okay. So let's try. It. So let's try then. Mm. Well, I was the cook, so I should let you comment first. Mm, it's very what nice. Do you think? Yeah, it's very nice because like it's very suit with like um, Indonesian flavor. Yes. It's very spicy and the salt as well. Usually it's very plain, right? Yes. Wow. So. To the next main course then. To the main course, to the main, to the main event. Uh -huh. um, as I said, this is uh, uh, a seafood dish that I uh, make for my family at mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I like it because uh, I like making it because it was the favourite dish I made for my uh, mother-in-law. All right. It was uh, very important to us and our family, mm -hmm. so I call it parents and parents and more seafood. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, I used to pretend that it was much harder to make than it I actually see. is. Trying to like like all son-in-laws, I was always trying to impress my mother. Uh, so, and we've got uh, some of the heritage rice that mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. um, I really would encourage people to look for uh, different types of rice. Mm -hmm. um, th this rice will have a brown rice, uh, 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 a nutty taste to it. Uh -huh. It'll be very unusual. It should go very well with the with the dish. Mm -hmm. Why don't you try first? Thank you. So let's just try it then yes. together. Yeah. together. Together. Okay. Together. Okay. So this is the curry. Um, maybe I will try it. I will try to eat the mm. the prawn. It's very big prawn. Mm. So yellow curry flavor, a little milder than than uh, some mm. strong curries. As I said, if um, if you like it very hot, mm -hmm. um, you can just keep adding dried chili yeah. until it reaches the point yeah. where you think it's uh, hot enough for you. Yeah. But it's very good. Mm. Very good it's for um, children too, yeah. if you leave some of the chili out. It's quite hot, really. It, it yeah. is quite hot. <laughs> yeah, but it's nice, really. Uh, so? It's very nice. Um, I will eat it up later yes, on. Yes, very good. But unfortunately, we have to, you know, end this session. Yes. Thank you very much, His Excellency Paul Dixon. And Hopefully we can see you again. Thank you very much. I look forward Thank to coming back. Thank you very back. much. Thank you. Thank you guys. See you. Thank Bye. You.